Good morning, 7th grade. Today we're going to be talking about Lepidoptera. So let's see what's going on here. Now, if you look on the left, you can see a normal butterfly over there. And hopefully by the end of this class, you can tell why it's different than on the right, you can see there's a moth. And I can look at these pretty simply. And there's some things you can look at right now. And you're probably thinking of differences between the two of them. Like, oh, you know, the butterfly looks kind of smooth and kind of, you know, almost shiny. Whereas this moth over here, he looks kind of uh, fuzzy, almost like a uh, furry animal. And that's one of the main differences, but we'll get into more of them as this goes along here. Now, Lepidoptera is the order that both moths and butterflies belong to. And they are very similar looking, but they are still very different. On the right, you can see just different ones, and you can point some of them out. And one of my favorites is number 17. Looks like he kind of has a skull on the back of his head. Just something cool to look at there. Now, this is the second largest insect order, which means there's a lot of different types of moths and butterflies to go around. And so you can see that right there. Now, Lepidoptera, very interesting. Just like we've been able to break down the names of every other um, insect type, we can do it here as well. So, the lepidop, that right there, that has to do with the word meaning scales. And of course, the terra means wings. And so, lepidoptera literally means scale wings. And it's those scales that make it so beautiful and add so much different variety in this order. Now, lepidoptera, these common features. They all have two compound eyes, they have long antenna, and two pairs of large membranous wings. And it's those wings that are the biggest and the many different scales on them. That's why they're called Lepidoptera, and you know that in the Chironoptera class that we talked about the other day. roof do. So if you go out to your roof, if you have a shingle roof, you can actually see this. If you have a steel roof, sorry, can't help you, but if you see the shingles on the roof, you can actually see how they lay over each other a little bit, and they kind of lock each other in place. That's basically what's going on with the scales on the wings, just in a more beautiful way. Now these scales are the colors of these insects. It's really oh, it's it's now, moths versus butterflies. Now, about them, as a doctor, as a doctor, they were moths. So the majority of them are going to be moths. Moths tend to be nocturnal, while butterflies are what we call diurnal. And diurnal means that they stay out during the day. One way to distinguish them is their wings at rest. Now, butterflies like to put their wings up or have them vertical, whereas moths like to have their wings spread out. And so you can see here this butterfly. He's got his wings up, and the moth has its wings nice and spread out there. Moths versus butterflies. Now, here are some other differences. Moths tend to be fuzzy and plump. And so you can see the moth right here, this guy. He's got what looks to have some fur on him, and he's a bit plumper. Whereas our butterfly here is a bit more slender and almost smooth to that sense. There are four seasons to all Lepidopterans' lives. There's the egg, larva, pupa, and then the adult. And of course, the adult will have more eggs. From here, we can see the eggs on the underside of a leaf. And so these are actual caterpillar eggs. And they are very, very useful. Um, obviously for making new caterpillars and things like that. A female butterfly can lay from 50 eggs to 1,000 eggs at one time. And so it depends on the species and things like that. That's a huge number. And it's really interesting to think about that. If you're lucky, um, you know, 
as a human, you might get, this is pushing it, 10 kids, you know, if you really, really wanted to have a bunch of kids. Whereas these guys can lay out 50 in one go. They are laid on the plant that the caterpillar will most likely eat. And so once they're born, the mother is smart. They put them somewhere they know they can get food, so immediately after they're born, they can start eating. And the eggs are often covered with protective coating. So I don't really see it that much here, but I've seen them before when I have like almost a webbing over them, which is really cool to keep them away from predators. And the caterpillar stays here. Um, is the larva stage of your butterflies and moths. Caterpillars can produce silk from their silk glands. What comes out of their spinnerets? And so the silk gland is where it's stored, and then the silk can actually come out of the spinnerets. Moth caterpillars use the silk to actually help in locomotion. And so it's very similar to the way Spider Man would actually spit his web, or you know, he doesn't spit his web, he actually spit. that building, moth caterpillars can do some wool, silk, and that's pretty cool. Now from here, we have the cocoon or the pupa stage. This is the third stage here, and this is where the caterpillar actually starts to mature more. Its wings start to come out and things like that, and it's really, really interesting to see. Um, the caterpillar goes through a lot of different changes at this point, but the main one that we always notice is, like I talked about before, the wings. Now, when it comes to the adult, um, when the butterfly is fully developed inside of the cocoon, it has to fight its way out of the cocoon. And what this does is it actually starts the process of him being able to use his wings. And so if you were to try and help out one of these butterflies while they're trying to get out, you can actually permanently damage them because their wings won't ever work properly. And that was something I found out when I had a little butterfly farm when I was a kid. I did it for a science project at school, and I had a whole bunch of butterflies. And it was a lot of fun, but we did do that with one of them by accident because we didn't know what was going on. And it did damage the butterfly, sadly. You know, see in here it says, the butterfly has a large sucking mouth called the proboscis, and you can see this right here. And it looks exactly like this. It kind of spits out. We're going to end for today. Uh, seventh grade, thank you for watching. I hope you have a good day, and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you and goodbye.